Alright, so, now what happens if, my, if I come up with a situation um, where my forces are not entirely on the y direction and not entirely on the x direction? Uh, think of it this way. You're, you're pulling a, a radio flyer with a kid in it. Okay? When you pull on that radio flyer, you're not pulling down here in the x direction. You're not pulling up here in the y direction. You're kind of pulling at an angle. How do I deal with that? when I talk about work. So here's my situation. Here's that radio flyer. And if you don't know what a radio flyer is, it's a little red wagon. Okay? I actually have a radio flyer from one of my dogs. She's only got three legs, so. There's my radio flyer. Okay? So I pull on this. I'm applying a force, and the force I'm applying, remember rules of free body diagrams, I'm going to start from the center of the object. The force that I'm applying is like this, okay? But the distance that I travel is not going to be in that direction. The distance that I'm going to travel is going to be in this direction. All right, cut. See, there I go. Distance. I want to use the word distance. Displacement. The displacement in which I travel is in this direction. Okay, so what's the work being done? How much work am I doing on that radio flyer? Well, what we need to do is we're concentrating on all the forces that are in the direction of that displacement. Okay, so we're only going to concern ourselves with forces that are in that direction of that displacement. So here's the direction of my displacement. If I look at it, and I'm going to try to redraw this as best as I can, here's the force. And here's the displacement. I'm going to hopefully have enough room. Did I get it all in there? Yeah, just barely. So here's the displacement. Okay? So what we need to do in this situation is only concern ourselves with the component. When I use the word component, you should be thinking trig. You only concerning ourselves with the component component of this applied force that's in the direction of that of that um, displacement. Now we can always the, the whole idea of components is that we can always express this force vector as two vectors. Here's our first vector. Okay, force applied in the x direction, and here's my second vector. So anytime I can think about a force, I can think about any force as having two components. One, of, one component in the X and one component in the Y. Okay, you should know that. So, force in the X times this, okay? So that means that the work that I'm going to do on that radio flyer is going to be equal to the force applied in the X direction, okay? So the force applied in the x direction times the displacement in the x direction. Okay? So that's the work that's being done. This force in the y direction, this component of the force in the y direction, is not in the direction of the displacement. It doesn't matter. We don't concentrate on it. We don't even think about it. It's not important. Okay? So this is the amount of work being uh, <laughs> the amount of work being done. Now that's the general form. This is the way I'd like you, for you to think about it. Okay, think about only the forces in the x direction and concentrate on those forces. Now what you're going to see in most texts is they're going to take the thinking out of it. They're going to simplify that equation and say, look, in this situation with the angle being here that this is the equation you're going to use. So if we know this angle here, theta, and 9 out of 10 times we are going to know that angle. In some cases, this is some really sneaky text, which I really like. They give you that angle instead. This one right here, if you didn't see it. That angle instead. But when we're talking about this angle, we can come up with a simplified equation for that. That means the simplified equation is going to be the force applied now, to determine that, this, this right here, what function are we going to use? Well, Sokotoa, sine, cosine, tangent. Sine being opposite over hypotenuse, 
cosine being adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent, which is going to be opposite over adjacent. Well, because, you know, we don't like tangent. Tangent's kind of a dumb function. We're going to use cosine. Okay, so we're going to concentrate on this. It turns out that looking at that triangle FA here, here, that uh, cosine theta is equal to FA, oh, opposite, sorry, FAX over FA. Okay, and then move, over, move FA over to the other side and I get FA cosine theta is equal to f a x okay it, it, yeah i'm just trying to show it to you if you if you want to to see it a little bit better just approach me in class and i'll show you exactly where this is coming from so that means the simplified version this right here is equal to f a cosine theta delta x change in position okay so what you are going to see in most textbooks is that work is equal to a force times the cosine of the angle in between that force and the displacement times the displacement. Okay? That is what you're going to see in most textbooks. Now, giving the explanation of where it's coming from, if it was me, I wouldn't even put this out there, I think, you know, the idea of knowing what a dot product means is more, far more important than the simplified definition of work, okay? This definition only works when you know that angle and if they don't give you the other angles, okay? So use your brain, okay? So this is, this is work. Or at least that's the definition of work that you're going to see in most textbooks.